And welcome back to Field Focus. We are continuing our series talking to the filmmakers involved in this year's Deep Fried Film Festival. And today we're joined by Namrat Basra, who has a film in called Poor Connection. Namrat, can you tell us a bit about yourself and the film, please? Hi, hi guys. Um, this is uh, Namrat Pal Singh Basra. I'm from India and currently I'm in uh, Canada. Um, I've been here uh, since uh, two and a half years now, and uh, I have recently graduated from Toronto Film School. And as a part of the project for the thesis film, um, we were supposed to make a film, but due to the pandemic uh, and ongoing lockdown, uh, all of a sudden uh, it was uh, uh, there was a new challenge. Uh, it, it was COVID films. Uh, so uh, what that was to make a film. Um, in the present scenario of the lockdown. So that is what inspired me to make Poor Connection. Um, the the thing that excited me was uh, uh, that I had to make film in the present condition of the lockdown. And uh, I was given a choice either to film with a crew of 10, as uh, the mandatory terms were that you can film with the uh, total people of 10 uh, in, in, a, in a room. But um, there was something else that I thought that maybe if, uh, if we are in a lockdown and we cannot go anywhere, instead of just taking the opportunity of 10 people and going out and shoot a film, I thought maybe it's better to just sit at home, relax, uh, come out with a script uh, and then shoot on Zoom because each and everything, like uh, everything was uh, done on Zoom, the classes and even if you were, um, going to talk to someone you were collaborating with, you were doing it on Zoom. So I thought, why not? Uh, because it had a, a recording option. So I just wanted to play with it. So that's what got, got me started. Brilliant. We're going to play a little clip just now. Yeah. Hey. You're late. Yes, I know. Uh, my internet was working, so I had to restart my router and my laptop. Listen up. Great. So this this has happened to people so many times during during lockdown where they haven't been able to date as normal. And um, so mm -hmm. your your film kind of centers around that sort of relationship between two yeah. people, yeah? Yeah. And what, what sort of challenges did you have doing the, the, the sort of filming remotely and through Zoom? Uh, the one of the biggest challenge was uh, to get each and everyone to collaborate uh, to, uh, in a specific time to get uh, uh, to everyone to just be at one place at one time so that each and every instruction, uh, what was to be done, the script, uh, the rehearsals, uh, the camera angle, because I was not present at uh, the location where the actors were. So I had to um, uh, guide them like what kind of a frame I'm looking for, what what is to be in the foreground, in the midground and the back, because I needed the variation to work in a very little uh, environment of just one room. Um, so that was the biggest challenge that I faced. And if you, had to, if you had to do it again, is there anything you would have done differently? Uh, no, I think, uh, or what what I did the first time, uh, uh, even though it was not the best, and I won't say that it was it wasn't the, the worst as well, but uh, whatever came out out, out of it uh, was a learning experience, and I think that is more important than uh, anything else to just have that learning experience, even if it's for the first time, or if it's uh, even for the hundredth time that you're making a film. Everything every time uh, you have to uh, you learn something new. And was it the, the the inspiration for the film? Did that purely come from lockdown, or was there anything else that, that came came to the um, film from actually, that? Um, there was a project that I was working on that uh, that I was going to uh, film an, a, another film uh, that uh, that I already had a script and uh, I had to get it greenlit from the school in order to make it. 
Um, but then uh, due to COVID and the second reason being that I did not want to make that film was uh, I kept thinking over and over that how is this my story? And uh, the more I kept asking myself that, uh, I didn't come up with an answer. So I thought that uh, maybe I should just leave that project for uh, like aside for now and then uh, just uh, face the situation, uh, see what's happening and then uh, just come out with something new. So that that was uh, uh, that was really good because uh, there was a challenge in it, like something that hasn't been done before. So I just loved the challenge and I just took it. What we've noticed with the films from this year, um, because of, of the whole COVID situation and the lockdowns in different mm -hmm. countries, people have had to yeah. adapt to something. Yeah. They've they, got to adapt in their day-to-day -day lives, but they've had to adapt yeah. their filmmaking process as well. So it's been really interesting yeah. from, from our perspective to, to receive these. Um, yeah. But are there any other filmmakers that, that inspire your work or you're keen on following? Um, there are many filmmakers that inspire me, but um, uh, the top two uh, that comes to my mind right now is uh, Jason Reitman. He's from Canada. He is the director of uh, one of the famous films, Juno. Um, and the second director uh, that I love his work is Anurag Kashyap from India. Um, uh, that's known for Gangs of Vasipur. Uh, I've been following him for uh, quite uh, some time now because uh, ever since his first film came out i've been following him um so that is one of the style that i love because uh, he uh, brings in something new and jason Reitman, i love him because uh, he uh, talks on social issues that people generally don't talk on and is that what's led you into getting into filmmaking and tackling different issues through, through film? Uh, filmmaking, uh, I think um, as far as I can remember, uh, every time uh, during my school days, uh, every time I, lis I, I used to listen to the literature, uh, the, the stories, the novel and everything, uh, every time when I used to read it or when someone was reading it to me, there was something that was going in my mind. It was like a scene to scene, um, like I was watching it. I was not reading it, I was watching it. So whatever, uh, came to my mind, I didn't know at that time like uh, uh, that I wanted to be a filmmaker, I wanted to be, a, be an actor and I actually went to an acting school as well. But um, even there I fell, fell in love with the camera and uh, in order to tell a story, uh, I thought was like when I used to listen to something, I used to imagine something in my head and how do I take it out? Um, so I started uh, filming some of the things and trying to collaborate it and uh, next thing you know I just fell in love with filmmaking because uh, it's like uh, it's like a music you tell a story through music and and every country that we get films from the the independent film industry is can vary quite a lot between e each country um, what support or what encouragement is there in Canada for filmmakers um the support and encouragement i think uh the, the support and encouragement uh, comes from the people that are around you uh who believe in you and uh who pushes who push who push you to achieve something so i think the main inspiration uh comes from the company that you have and uh, the other thing uh, uh the factor that the what the country is doing for you is uh, something uh to be uh, that you need to think of, about because uh, in reality they are doing a lot because they have uh, their own uh, uh, like funds that they raise uh, to uh, for inspiring or the upcoming filmmakers uh, so how do you get that how to uh, uh, collaborate with other people who are uh, making films so each and everything has to work so you need to be at the right place at the right time I guess but uh, you just leave everything on time like that. So that has been uh, like one of the most beautiful thing that comes in filmmaking is time, because with time you uh, you become something uh, more beautiful, or your experience in life enhances your quality in filmmaking. Okay, so we're we're looking forward to sharing per connection with our our audience as part of the Deep Fried Film Festival. 
Why should people watch your film? Why should people watch my film? That is the <laughs> that's a surprising question, and I think uh, that is one of the main uh, one of the most important question. Why would people watch my film? Uh, the when I was uh, thinking about uh, what subject to choose, uh, I had three or four written down, and uh, what I kept uh, going back to was uh, a romantic comedy in which. Uh, 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 the uh, the story the uh, core connection reveals um, the main thing that I wanted to share with each and every one was uh, uh, that sometimes in a glance we just decide what is good or bad for us or what is working or what is not working without giving it a second thought um, but in reality there is something deeper to it um, there is something more where you want to stop but every time you stop somewhere you just uh, uh, how do I say it? You just um, finish that probability of something that you could have uh, just because at that point, at that moment, you just felt angry and that anger overtook you and you decided to just uh, stop everything where it was. But in reality, if you just give it some time, you will see that things um, that you think are not right for you is actually very good. So that is the main message that I wanted to give. Oh, right. I, that is why you should watch it. <laughs> I've watched <laughs> all the films quite a few times um, as part yeah. of the panel, and I totally get what you mean with that. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you for having me. We're looking forward to having Poor Connection on at this year's Deep Fried Film Festival. We will be sharing links with everybody on all our social media platforms on how to get involved in watching the, the films in this year's film festival. But for now, for me at Pulled Focus, thanks for watching.